and welcome. This webinar is a collaboration between the United States Department of Veteran Affairs, VA Center for Faith-Based and Neighborhood Partnerships, CFBNP, and the National Cemetery Administration Scheduling Office. My name is Trulesta Pauling. I am the Senior Outreach Pro Program Specialist in CFBNP. I will be your moderator this afternoon. Everyone's phone has been muted. If you have a question during the presentation today, please type it in the Q&A box to, to the right of your screen. I will read the questions at the end of the presentation and the presenter will provide a response. This presentation will be provided to everyone that registered and joined this webinar today. This is a live recording. I would like to thank Mr. J. Dahlripper and Mr. Steve Ecker for this collaboration. We are grateful for your time today. But before we get started, I would like to introduce Mr. Conrad Washington, Director of the VA Center for Faith-Based and Neighborhood Partnerships, who will be providing today's welcoming remarks. Mr. Washington serves as the Director for the VA Center for Faith-Based and Neighborhood Partnerships. He retired from the United States Marine Corps with 20 years of active duty service with a combat tour in 2004 in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom II. Mr. Washington is a licensed minister actively serving in his faith. He received his master's degree of divinity in pastoral studies from Moody Theological Seminary. He also holds a master's in business management and a bachelor of science degree in education. Additionally, he is a graduate of VA's class of 2017 virtual expiring leaders program. Now I give you Mr. Washington for opening remarks. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Chu. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Uh, this is a, a tough day for, for all of us as we watch Adalia, the storm hit Florida's Big Bend area. That's that little nook between the Panhandle and the peninsula uh, this morning. I think it landed as a category three strength a hurricane. Uh, and, and apparently that part of the Gulf Coast hasn't seen uh, that kind of deadly storm uh, for over 125 years. Uh, so our prayers and thoughts are with all those affected by Hurricane Adalia. Uh, FEMA's on deck with some other organizations trying to uh, do this assessment uh, of, of, of the damage. But we, uh, we, we want to make sure we keep those first responders and the victims in our prayers and our thoughts as they uh, try to find out what's going on and how much damage has been done uh, and all of that. Uh, but we also want to keep uh, those folks who were affected by the Hawaii fire in our prayers as well, uh, because just because the situation is over, uh, people are still dealing with the aftermath. So we want to keep those in prayer. Uh, but again, thank you all for joining us. And I also want to take time and uh, thank you for your patience and apologize to uh, to the audience. We had a, a couple of little glitches with our uh, our link for this particular uh, webinar. Uh, but please know we've done over 60 webinars in the last couple of years, and I can count the number of hiccups that we've had with uh, with blinks and, a, and about three fingers. Uh, but nonetheless, I can tell you that my team and I op operate in excellence. We believe in that. That's our philosophy, my vision. They've taken that vision and make it their own. Uh, but even with that being said, we all are not perfect. Uh, so thank you for your patience, uh, and we'll be right back at you next Thursday for a suicide prevention training. So thank you for joining us today. I want to thank Jay and Steve again for the continued partnership within the VA, and we look forward to a great brief today. And I don't normally comment on, uh, at least publicly on our videos, uh, maybe because it was a Marine there as well, uh, but I'll tell you, uh, that was some riveting videos that we had as preludes today, and I appreciate uh, my team for putting that together uh, and working with Jay and Steve to get those. Uh, we just think that what the VA does uh, is really important and it's great to have opportunities like this platform to amplify uh, what we do and what Steve and Jay do and so many others in the VA. Uh, but anyway, thank you all for joining us today and I uh, believe you're going to get something out of today. So thank you and be blessed. Thank you, Mr. Washington. At this time, I would like to introduce Mr. Jay Dahlripper, Director of the National Cemetery Administration Scheduling Office, who will provide some opening remarks Please read a summary of his bio to the left of the screen. Mr. Dahl Ripper has been the director of the National Cemetery Scheduling Office and deputy director of field programs since October 2019. 
He is responsible for all scheduling and eligibility activities, including pre-need determinations for veterans and family members. Mr. Dargaper graduated in 2019 from the National Cemetery Administration Comprehensive Year-Long Cemetery Director Intern Program. Mr. Dargaper is also an Air Force veteran. At this time, I give you Mr. Dargaper for opening remarks. Thank you, Trulasta, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for the privilege of speaking with you today. So, as Trulesta said, my name is Jay Dowerpel. I'm with the VA's National Cemetery Administration. I'm the director of the NCA's National Cemetery Scheduling Office that's located here in St. Louis. Um, with me today is Steve Ecker, the assistant director of the scheduling office. For those who may be unfamiliar with NCA, so the VA operates 155 national cemeteries and 34 soldiers' lots and monument sites in 42 states across the United States and Puerto Rico. There are more than 4 million Americans, including veterans of every war and conflict, buried in a VA national cemetery. Veterans have earned these burial benefits through their service and sacrifice of our nation. And the scheduling office was actually established to support our veterans and their family members during one of their most difficult times in their lives. Almost all requests for burial in the National Cemetery now come through the scheduling office. So we like to say we are the gateway to NCA. Today, we're here to provide you with information on a couple of very important topics. Um, first is the high level eligibility requirements uh, veterans and their family members need for burial in a national cemetery, and then give you information about pre-need burial program that NCAA offers to veterans, service members, and their dependents. And then lastly, we also want to answer any questions you have. So thank you again for your attendance and for the opportunity to present this information to you. Back to you, Trilesta. Thank you, Mr. Dahl Ripper. Appreciate your time today. Now I would like to introduce our speaker for today, Mr. Steve Ecker. Mr. Ecker is the Assistant Director of the National Cemetery Scheduling Office since April 2020. In this position, Mr. Ecker is responsible for assisting the Director with all scheduling and eligibility activities for veterans and their families. Mr. Ecker is a veteran. He was in the Navy. He is a member of the United States Naval Ceremonial Guard Joint Base Anacostia Bowling, Washington, D.C. At this time, I give you Mr. Steve Ecker for today's presentation. Steve. Thank you, Trulesta and Mr. Washington. As always, it's a pleasure to speak with the group and share this information. I always look forward to this opportunity. <laughs> so if we want to get Going with the slides. Bear with me one second here. I... So, oh, you have them? Okay. Okay, can everybody see the slides? Yes, we can see it now, Steve. Bear with me, I'm having some technical issues here. Looks like I might've just lost the webinar. Mr. Ecker, you can just continue. I'll move them for you, sir. You want me to take it while you work through it? No, I, I lost the visual. I have them up now. Sorry about that, everybody. Okay, so um, this is the high level agenda. 
uh, we're going to discuss as as Jay mentioned. We're going to talk about the general eligibility requirements for burial. Uh, what is included in the burial benefit? Put together some frequently asked questions uh, that we've gotten from past presentations. Talk about persons eligible and, and an overview of the pre need program, how to apply and how to fill out the form. Next slide. So, first, let's start with what is included in the burial benefit. The burial benefit includes a grave site in any national cemetery with available space. And that's for casket and cremation burials. Grave liner or vault, uh, the VA provides a concrete liner for casketed burials. Also included is the opening and closing of the grave site and perpetual care of that grave site. Government headstone, marker or niche cover. Burial flag. A presidential memorial certificate that's provided by the cemetery. And military honors. Uh, military honors are not included in the benefit, uh, but arranged by the family or the personal representative. But our office will provide the information for the family to contact them to coordinate. Next slide. So let's talk about some family responsibilities. So what are some of the things that are, are not covered in the burial benefit, but maybe family responsibilities. Those, those include costs pertaining to cremation services, costs for purchasing a casket or an urn, transportation of any sort to include transportation to the National Cemetery, cost of funeral home storage. So generally any costs associated with the funeral home or any services they provide is private responsibility. Also the cost for obtaining a grave site in a private cemetery if the veteran chooses not to be interred in a national cemetery. But we do want to note uh, that families may be eligible for what's called the veteran burial allowance to assist with some of these costs. This is a flat rate monetary allowance, and it's actually not administered by NCA. It's actually administered through the Veteran Benefits Administration. So for more contact information on that benefit or to see if you qualify, you contact them directly. And also any costs associated with disinterring an individual from a private cemetery for interment in a VA national cemetery. That's also the responsibility of the family for those costs and that coordination. Next slide. So let's talk about some frequently asked questions. A lot of these are we, we get on most presentations we do. Some are new as of last presentation, but we like to capture some of these. I think it, it's helpful. First question, can I be buried in any national cemetery? The answer is yes. You know, veterans and eligible dependents can be buried in any national cemetery. The main point is here is a cemetery with available grave sites. Is the spouse required to be buried in the same national cemetery as the veteran? No, veteran and spouse do not have to be interred in the same cemetery. They can be interred in different cemeteries. And we see that a lot and that's perfectly fine. Will my spouse be buried next to me or with me in the same grave site? Generally, non-veteran spouses are interred in the same grave site with their eligible veteran. Cases where both are veterans and are determined eligible on their own service, an adjacent grave site or set-aside grave may be requested for the, their surviving spouse at, for their time of need. Those requests are coordinated through the cemetery. Does it matter if I am casket or cremated? It does not matter as far as NCA, but it just depends on site availability for that national cemetery that was selected. Does the National Cemetery Administration manage Arlington National Cemetery? The answer there is no. Um, a lot of people assume that NCA does oversee Arlington but Arlington is actually run by the Department of the Army. So inquiries for Arlington should be directed uh, to Arlington National Cemetery directly. Slide. So, so some more questions we get. Is my wife listed on the headstone also? Yes, the veteran information is, is on the front and the spouse information is presented on the back of the headstone. Can I get a headstone if I am cremated? We do provide a headstone or marker for all remains types. So there will be a headstone 
provided for a cremation burial? Are there any costs to have my spouse buried? Like any NCA benefit, there are no fees for anything that VA provides. Families are responsible, as I mentioned before, for funeral home and other expenses required before arriving at the cemetery. So the easiest way to think about it is once you drive through the cemetery gates with your loved one, the NCA covers everything from that point. Can I request just a service and military honors if I am not being interred in a national cemetery? That's referred to as a memorial service, and that is allowable. Families are allotted time to have a service and military honors if they choose in one of the shelters, but the only difference is there, there's no interment afterwards. So we see this a lot with cremated burials. A family may want to hold on to their loved one's cremated remains, have a memorial service and honors, and maybe come back and inter at a later date, or you know they may ha already have arrangements for a private cemetery, but we can't accommodate that. What is the difference between in-ground cremation burial and being placed above ground in the column barium wall. As many of you have probably seen in cemeteries, some call them mausoleums, some call them columbariums, but an in-ground cremation burial is like a traditional burial. The urn is actually placed uh, at rest in the graveside in the earth. Um, a columbarium contains niches for placement where the urn is placed inside a niche, and of course a niche cover goes over the niche. Next slide. Some more questions. If you are 100% service connected, what will the VA cover if buried in a national cemetery? Again, for a 100% service connected veteran, the same still applies. The VA will cover all the products that I mentioned on a previous slide. Anything once we drive through the cemetery, including the, the, the grave, grave line or vault, the opening and closing of the grave, headstone, burial flag, and presidential memorial certificate. Does the VA help to pay to reserve a grave site in an outside private cemetery? If the family wishes to enter in a private cemetery, as I mentioned before, any associated costs would be the responsibility of the family. However, the family may be eligible for a VA government headstone uh, for placement in that private cemetery. Is there a time limit for requesting burial? My husband's cremated remains were not placed in a VA National Cemetery at his time of passing three years ago. Am I still able to apply? There are no time limits for requesting burial. If the family wants to keep the remains, they're more than welcome to do so and then come back to the NCA at any time to request burial. We've seen it where a family uh, a surviving spouse just wasn't ready to to let go of their loved one. Might have kept, you know, kept him or her, you know, three, five, ten years. Whenever they're ready and comfortable, NCA will be here to accommodate and take care of the family. Can you use your VA award letter with all the information on it to apply for a pre-need determination? The answer here is the DD-214 or discharge document is always required for burial but we can determine initial eligibility based on a service-connected disability rating of zero or greater, as indicated on the award letter. What we'll do is we'll use that information on that VA award letter to check VA systems to see if we can obtain a discharge document, um, but we will still need to obtain that discharge document before we can make an ultimate determination. But that information on the VA award letter can definitely be submitted and is helpful in our search. Next slide. So let's talk about one of the one of the benefits um, is the headstone and marker. So a lot of we get a lot of questions. Well, what what goes on a marker? Some of you may have visited a national cemetery and are familiar, but generally, it's they're pretty standardized. So all headstones and markers will include the, the legal name, branch of service, the date of birth and date of death the section and grave number. Families also have the option to do an optional inscription. And those all those different options and all the details around the headstone or marker are covered by the cemetery the day of the service. Next slide. 
So let's change gears a little bit here and let's talk about who is eligible for VA uh, NCA burial. Veterans, service members, spouses, and dependents may be eligible for burial uh, if they meet one of the requirements listed below. Is the person a veteran who didn't receive a dishonorable discharge or a service member who died while on active duty, active duty for training, or in active duty for training? Spouse or minor child of a veteran. In some cases, unmarried adult children of a veteran can be eligible. Those are unmarried adult children that are mentally or physically challenged, and we have separate reviews for those. But in some cases, unmarried adult children eligible. Next slide. So how does NCA define a veteran? The NCA defines a veteran by a person who served in an active military, naval, or air service and who was discharged from service, therefore, under conditions other than dishonorable. For more information on eligibility criteria or anything related to burial or memorial benefits, you can visit the link below. Next slide. So let's talk about some common categories for persons eligible. There are two distinct different groups we want to cover here. Uh, we could get into a lot more in depth, but you know, we'll be here for a few days. But we'll keep it high level because there's two important dates to keep in mind. First are veterans who served one or more days of active duty service. So for enlisted members who enlisted on or before September 7th, 1980, and for officers on or before October 16th of 81, all you would need is one day of active service to qualify. So if you served in a regular branch for active duty, one day of active service would qualify you for burial potentially if you enlisted before the dates. Next slide. So now let's talk about the 24 month requirement. This pertains to enlisted persons in a regular component who enlisted after September 7th of 1980 or officers again who enlisted after October 16th, 1981. Now the 24 month requirement has come in. So would have had to have served 24 months consecutive service or two years in a regular branch and discharged uh, under conditions other than dishonorable. So the big takeaway here is before September 7th, 1980, that was before the 24 month requirement. So there was no requirement for length of service, but after September 7th, 1980, that's when the two year minimum requirement comes into play. Next slide. Some other common categories, persons eligible, anyone receiving a pensionable or compensable status. So, so death benefits shall be granted for persons recognized by law as having pensionable or compens uh, comp compensable status. So this talks about um, our service connected veterans out there. It's important to remember if a veteran is 0% or greater and, and receiving service connected compensation, they're eligible for burial. For yourself, anyone on the call, or if you speak with anyone or any families, it's important to remember that if at any time a veteran becomes service connected, that could change their eligibility. So it's important for them to know that and to keep that in mind. Uh, as you go through the rating process as you sum, as you submit claims. So at any time, if you become service connected 0% or greater, that, that could be a, a, a difference as far as your eligibility for burial. Next slide. Some other common categories, a spouse or unremarried surviving spouse. So a spouse of a veteran is eligible. A surviving spouse of a veteran even if they remarry, are still eligible for burial under their first veteran's benefit. You would just verify their legal marriage marital status at the time of death. Next slide. So let's change gears again here. So we were talking about eligible. 
Let's talk about a few reasons for common reasons for denial. We pride ourselves here at NCSO. You know, we, we like to say we will turn over every rock to get to yes. We want to bury everyone we can, of course, within law. But we'll, we'll, do, we'll, we'll, we'll go to extremes to find information to, to help that family. And if we can get to yes, we will. But in cases where the person doesn't qualify, these are some of the common categories. DVA, which stands for dishonorable for VA purposes. These are cases where the service member might have had a discharge other than honorable or dishonorable. That's when the VA has adjudicated their service and determined their, their service disqualified for VA purposes. Active duty for training, less than 24 months, and reserve or guard time are probably our biggest uh, reasons for denial. Um, and there's a lot of a lot of confusion around those. Understand that those are for active duty or guards persons who might have served their full eight years, but were never called to active duty. The important thing to remember with active duty with guardsmen and and reserve persons is you had to have been called under Title 10 orders and completed your period for which you were called. So the important thing with that is Title 32 and Title 10. Title 10 is what we're looking for as far as being called by executive order. Reserve or guard time, those are persons who served in the reserve or guard, but were never called to active duty. Some other ones are listed there, no military information. Uh, won't go over all of them, but those are some of the different reasons why someone wouldn't qualify. Next slide. So let's talk about the pre-need eligibility program and, and, and pre-need burial. This allows families to apply in advance of need. So this is called a pre-need determination of eligibility, and we created this to help plan ahead and take the burden off of family members and, and to reduce delays at the time of need. It's important to note that pre-need means before the time of need. So simply speaking, it's before the time of death. And this application is for, for planning purposes uh, for burial in advance. It's important to note a pre-need determination request. Um, if you're if you're requesting a time of need burial, you wouldn't submit a pre-need request. You would call our office and we'd handle that as a time of need burial request. Next slide. So let's talk a, a little bit more about the pre-need program. It's for requests in VA national cemeteries only. And it's important to note, and we get a lot of questions on this, this is not a reservation. It does not ensure you a space in any particular national cemetery. Approvals and approval status may change and additional verification may be needed at the time of need. So veterans can let us know what cemetery they prefer but again, this isn't reserving them a spot in that cemetery. If for any reason that cemetery would fill up, they would have to choose another one closest to their area. The recommended applicants for pre need program encourage everyone to apply, but we do have certain people that could benefit probably the most from this program. That's un unmarried adult children who are physically or mentally disabled, as I mentioned before. Those sometimes take a little more documentation and verification, so it can take a little longer to, to go through that process. Reservists who are unsure if their service qualifies, those are those uh, reservists uh, and, and guards persons who, uh, I think I may have active duty, I'm not sure. Um, I think I might have been called active duty, not sure if it was a state call up or federal call up. We want to, we want, we want to see those requests so we can get that figured out ahead of time and get a determination made. Veteran and family members or individuals with any questions regarding their specific eligibility. And surviving uh, remarried spouses of pre previously interred veterans. So a lot of times in this case, as, as a surviving spouse, if the, if the spouse was married to the veteran at their time of passing and they're in a national cemetery, chances are we probably already have them in VA systems, but we want to we want to make sure that we do have that to give that surviving spouse the peace of mind. Next slide. So, what information do I need to apply? Just like 
pretty much every other benefit you know you would apply for, especially with the VA. We need the general personal information, social security number, date and place of birth, and all the military information you can provide, as well as discharge documents. We always say we err on the side of giving us more than not enough. The more information we can have when when the person applies, the better. Next slide. So on this slide, you'll see a picture of the form. So like every VA benefit, there is a specific form required to apply. And this is the VA form 40-10007. So one of the first things you wanna do is choose the VA National Cemetery you prefer to be buried. And this does not reserve you a spot in that cemetery, but we like to know which one you do prefer. This application does not apply to Arlington, as I mentioned before, they're run by the Army. And again, it does not guarantee you a spot at cemetery. You'll want to gather the supporting documents and information you'll need. And be sure to fill out an application for each person requesting a determination. So we, it, the easiest way to remember that is the, there's the veteran and then there's the claimant. So. For each claimant requesting a prenatal determination, we need a separate form signed by that claimant. Next slide. So let's break down the form a little bit. It's a busy form. We get a lot of questions on filling this out, but we thought it was important to kind of go through it. So the section one is the veteran and service member information. So this information is specific to the veteran. And as you can see, it's the veteran personal information and military information. Next slide. Section two focuses on the claimant. So this is where I discussed veteran information will always be at the top, but the claimant may not always be the veteran. So if a veteran is submitting a claim a request for themselves, then the, then the veteran will also be the claimant. In a case where veteran is the spouse, the spouse's information is going to be in the claimant information because they're actually the ones requesting termination based on their veteran benefit, spouse's benefit. So this, all this information is specific to the claimant. Choose um, the relationship to the veteran and the claimant's information. Next slide. Section three is pretty self-explanatory. This is just the signature field. And this needs to be signed in box 32 by each claimant. And box 34, that's where you identify your relationship. Next slide. So how do I apply for a pre need determination? The preferred method is online through va.gov. We also accept paper applications, so you can download the VA form 40-10007. Just Google VA form 40-10007, it'll take you right to a PDF copy. You can submit those through the mail or by fax. And electronic is preferred, um, and that's probably the quickest way to do it, because that gets us all the information electronically and automated. In some cases, you know, we'll need the discharge documents. Again, err on the side of more documents. In some cases, we may need marriage certificates, death certificates, dependency statements, and medical information. Those are more pertinent to any unmarried adult child requests. Next slide. What happens after I apply? Our goal is to complete your application within 120 days of receipt. I'm, I'm pleased to say that we're requesting those quite a bit faster than 120 days. Our goal is to re respond within 120 days of receipt. We'll send the information via the Postal Service once we reviewed and made a final determination. For application updates or additional questions after a claim is submitted, Please feel free to call the NCSO at the number listed, press option four. The pre-need 
department is here to answer your questions from Mo Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern time. We ask you that if you submit a claim, we ask you to, to be as patient as possible and rather than just resubmitting. But we're always here to answer your questions and provide statuses on request if you have those. That concludes what I have to present today. Uh, again, thank you, Mr. Washington and Trulesta for the opportunity. And I hope this information was helpful. Thank you so much, Steve, for that wealth of information. We appreciate your time again today, you and Mr. Dog Meyer, uh, Dog Ripper. I do not see any questions in the Q&A section right now. Um, if you have questions, please feel free to reach out to us or to Mr. Ecker or Mr. Dog Ripper with your uh, any questions that you may have, and they will get directly back to you. Their point of contact information is on the screen right now. Their names and their email addresses and also their websites. If you need to reach out to any of our any of our team as well, uh, you will be able to see our point of contact information on the screen as well. At this point, I'm going to turn the mic back over to Mr. Washington for closing remarks. Thank you, Chu. Hey, Jay, great job again. Appreciate it. Uh, Steve, thank you again for uh, for presenting. As always, very informative. Uh, and I see uh, my team there as uh, responding to some of the questions about uh, getting the slides. Uh, I think it's safe to say that if you register for this presentation, I think it's been said you will receive the slides. Uh, uh, so that's that. Uh, again, thank you all for joining us today. And again, I ask you to keep uh, in your prayers and your thoughts those folks that are dealing with uh, the aftermath of Medallia in Florida. And again, even those folks in Hawaii who are dealing with the aftermath of their, of their fire as well. Uh, so uh, be safe and, uh, and have a, a blessed and safe weekend. Thank you so much, Mr. Washington. I do see one question uh, from Ms. Aurora Franklin, Steve, if you're there. Is it possible? If you could email your slide decks to us and if if you did register uh, for this event and join this webinar today, you will get a copy of this presentation today. Also, we will provide a recording of this webinar on our website in about two weeks. Please go to our website and subscribe to our upcoming webinars and to our Facebook for future webinars and information. This adjourns today's webinar. Any questions will be, uh, we will provide our direct response back to you. Thank you for joining us today. Have a safe and wonderful day. Goodbye.